Come be a part of Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics with your host, Dr. Ed Holliday. Hear the voices of liberty speaking all across America. Doc Holliday provides thought-provoking interviews and commentary about the issues and actions that are afflicting this country and what we need to do to get America back on track. Get fired up. Get inspired. Get on board with Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics right now. And here we go. And you heard it once again. That's the sound of rock cracking, and you're listening to Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics. I'm your host, Dr. Ed Holliday. You're listening to us right here on webtalkradio.net. That's webtalkradio.net. Glad to have you. So much is happening. It's just like streams of rocks rolling down cliffs everywhere, and I hope it's not a republic, republic coming to ruin uh, with socialism, but we are socialists. You listen to last week's show. If you didn't listen to it, go back and listen to it. The United States of Socialism. We are full pledged socialists and uh, letting anybody in our country. I don't know if you heard that uh, now, if you step across the border, they give you a ticket where you want to go, bus, or they give you a plane ticket. You don't have an ID, no problem. They give you a slip of paper and say, present this when you're checking in at the airport how many americans get to check in for a piece of paper no id how many terrorists have come across our border i hope we're not giving terrorists slips of paper instead of an id to go through the tsa that american citizens have to go through somebody please tell me that's not true but that's what i have heard and read about so Wow, we if if you can get a if you can step across the border, get detained, have no ID. You may be from uh, countries around the world. I think they've had, they've identified people uh, coming from sixty four different com- countries so far this year, crossing the southern border. And if you need to get a plane ticket somewhere. They give you a slip of paper saying this takes place of identification. Good gracious, what have we come to? And the crisis on the border getting worse and worse. And we got a president. And I'm not, I remember Gerald Ford fell down the steps of Air Force One. I remember Joe Biden last year mocking Trump and saying he ran up steps. Well, he tried to run up the steps, failed three times, and I guess you've probably seen that video. If you hadn't, you can Google it, but uh, uh, President Biden had trouble getting up the steps, and and then that's after he refused to debate uh, Va- Vladimir Putin. How about that? Well, we, listen, today's show, we got a great show. We got Reverend William Owens in an interview with Mike Huckabee, a great interview. Now, Reverend Owens has been on our show before. We've talked about his book, but it's a great interview. It's about five minutes long. I want to play that for you because it really talks about his book. Mike Huckabee is a great host asking great questions, and I want to play that clip for you. Also, I'm going to tell you I got to meet, uh, speak with and uh, had a contact with Alveda King, uh, Dr. Alveda King, which is a friend of this show and a friend of mine and a friend of President Donald J. Trump. So we'll check in with her, and I'll tell you what we learned. Uh, I learned from her this week. And also, we had uh, the, the, this whole economic thing that's going on as these stimulus checks are coming in, socialism on steroids, and the Democrats are not even calling it socialism. We know what it is. And so we're going to talk about that first. Right after I let you know next week's show, we have Brock Pierce coming back. And one reason uh, I told you we're going to start doing a little crypto corner. And what that's talking about, cryptocurrencies, we won't go deep into it each week. But I, you need to know what the future looks like. And so I am, I've got Brock Pierce. If you didn't hear, we had a great interview a couple months ago. But he is... 
uh, he's he's founded some of these cryptocurrencies. He started with back in 2014. He knows about them. Tether is one he founded. It's a stable coin. It goes along with the American dollar, but it's used a hundred billion dollars a day, a day across the world. So, I, I want to let you know more about Bitcoin. You've heard the term Bitcoin. What do you do? What does it mean for the economy? You just, are you going to stick your head in the sand? Are we going to let the liberals understand everything? Conservatives must know about cryptocurrency, our economy, the future, blockchain, and we're going to do it in realistic, simple terms. We've got Brock Pierce. He'll be on next week's show, and we'll dedicate it to that. No politics. Just understand uh the term blockchain and bitcoin and cryptocurrency get a little bit of knowledge about it next week don't let it scare you and you think oh i'm not interested i don't know anything you need to know conservatives cannot cede the future to all the leftists brock pierce is no conservative but he's going to come on and help us understand all these things that are coming on to us quickly quickly and and one reason is your dollar's getting worth less and less the more it's printed so why, why is bitcoin going up maybe there's a correlation i think there is and we're going to talk about that next week with brock pierce so don't miss next week's show saying that have you tried to get a vehicle lately i have a son that's ready to go to college and we've got to get him some kind of vehicle and <laughs> And we went shopping some, starting the process, see what's out there. And uh, you, they're telling us, the salesmen own all the lots, trying to find some of a good used vehicle. But they're saying they're, they're, they're just leaving the lots in a hurry. Why? Because people are coming in with five or $6,000 stimulus checks. And they're making down payments on new cars. They're buying used cars. And they can't keep the... Uh, cars on the lots they're you know and you think man our our economy is going gangbusters same thing with these stimulus checks coming in uh i expect to see the stock market to shoot up it had some all-time highs last week the tech uh the nasdaq more tech heavy has not reached back the highs they had last month but they, they probably will keep going up and these cryptocurrencies <laughs> Are, are sky some of them are skyrocketing when i say skyrocketing there's some i've seen go up two and three hundred percent in one day but two and three hundred percent on many of them within uh within you know a couple of weeks time some of them up a thousand percent in a month and i'm just saying where is this money coming from where is this enthusiasm coming from and stimulus checks may be a part of it they just started coming out we'll see if things keep going up but the economy looks like it should go gangbusters we have economists predicting five and six percent of G gdp going up the percentage quarterly it is unreal what they're predicting so is that not great are we not just thrilled and americans have been sitting back and not being able to go out and eat and states are opening it up well what's wrong with that i love that but the thing is they're not being it's not happening on a strong economy donald j trump had us on a strong footing what i mean by that well what i mean is think back before the uh, coronavirus the china virus hit us what happened well, everything was running smoothly. It's like a well-oiled machine. The, the economic engine of America was hitting on all cylinders. And then, of course, it was derailed by the coronavirus just a year ago. And it was a miracle that the stock market came back up in the summer after it got wiped out last March. It was a horrible month for stocks and, and because everything was being shut down. The whole economy was being shut down. And, and people, there was fear and uncertainty. And the miracle of it all, we got a vaccine within a year, less than a year, thanks to the warp speed by President Donald J. Trump. Who gives him credit? Not many, but I will. 
Maybe he'll get a Nobel Prize. He should. Think about all the lives he saved by getting that vaccine together so quickly. When it, the, the shortest of one before that is about five years, and he got it done in less than a year, unbelievable, unbelievable. And thank God there were people praying for a miracle, and Donald J. Trump was a part of that miracle, and people, many people won't admit that. I don't think our president now uh, has a clue, and he's trying to take uh, full credit for everything. When, when Donald J. Trump had already ordered uh, like $600 million, <laughs> uh uh, the, uh, the you know the injections and the vaccines 600 million and, and, and Biden said oh he had to come and get more because they didn't have anything are you kidding me the same guy that stumbled up the Air Force One uh, but please uh, give give Donald J Trump some credit but let me tell you about what is going on in this economy some places are still not open not fully open some of them go oh we're going to open up 10 percent uh, California, I think, is letting the theme parks open back up, but only at 10% capacity. So it, can you make money at 10%? Obviously not, but I guess it's a beginning. But there's so many places, and what happens in an economy start going gangbusters, you're going to get, you're going to get pent up demand in one area. You're going to run out of supply somewhere because all the factories aren't open, and, and you got people... I know people in my area that the, the heads of companies are begging for workers. But the Democrats have extended the $300 a month on top of the state unemployment until September. So what happens when you got people sitting around getting unemployment and a stimulus check and getting on Robin Hood and doing stocks and cryptocurrency and they're not producing anything out uh, in in and work in America. What happens? Well, the problem of that is we're not on that solid Trump foundation. We're on the foundation of socialism. And that is not good, folks. It is scary. It is a house built of cards. And someday, I'm afraid, it's going to come tumbling down because Look at gas prices. Trump had them low because he was exploring for gas, helping the gas industry and the oil industry, and, and Biden is shutting them down. So what's happening? Our gasoline is going up. The cost of fuel is going to go up. Say, so, oh, we'll drive an electric car. It's going to go up because you got to make electricity to fuel that car. We sh we've shut down so many plants. The coal is not being used. And the Biden administration sure not going to use it. So what we're going to have is high energy prices. And it's going to produce more pressure on all companies that use energy or ship their products. It's going to cost more and more. Inflation could get out of, contr out of control. And that house of cards will get shakier and shakier. When it happens, I can't predict. I don't have a crystal ball, but it's not going to go on forever. Gangbusters like everybody's planning. What happens if the stock market hears that, oh, we think we're going to go up uh, 20% or a company says we're going to have 20% more sales because everybody's going out and buying things. What, ha what happens if they just go up 15%? Well, Wall Street's not going to like that. They're going to punish the stock. There's such high expectations Will they be met by an economy that's hot in one area, cold in another, not being allowed to work in another, and then people sitting at home rather using unemployment instead of going and working? What does that add up to? It's not, a, it's not an economy running on all cylinders. It's misfiring, and it's going to cause some problems somewhere down the road. How far, I cannot, I cannot predict. But it will not end well because socialism never works. It never has. And while we believe in it, it, bl it just blows me away that enough American people, like the, the citizens of Georgia, voted two socialists in as United States senators. Socialists. They're not liberal Democrats. They're not moderate Democrats. They are full-blown Bernie Sanders socialists. 
and they were elected in the state of Georgia for United States Senate. And I hope America can wake up, but we we may never get another election. Who knows? I, I don't understand it. But all I know is we have to have faith in Americans that there's enough that understand, and even those who voted for Biden, when they see what socialism does, that they'll wake up and say enough is enough. And there's someone I know and respect, and and I'm about to... <laughs> Uh, he's been on this show, Reverend William Owens, and he was on uh, my Huckabee show uh, last week, and I want to play this clip, and we're going to do that right after. I remind you, you're listening to Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics right here on webtalkradio.net, and we have a book out. Reverend Owens got a book called A Dream Derailed. I got a book that I wrote with Dr. Alveda King, who I talked with this week. And uh, we wrote it also with Dr. Alex McFarland, and it's called Bedrock Truths. You can get that book at my website, www.docholiday.org. And Dr. Alveda King, uh, just she's getting refocused. She had uh, a lot of access for her pro-life movement in the White House under President Trump, but I doubt she'll get that same under President Biden. Uh, if you know President Biden, tell him to give Alveda King a call. Dr. Alveda King would maybe uh, listen to her. He said he's going to be president for all Americans. So if you know President Joe Biden, tell him to give Dr. Alveda King a call. Or it might be better let Vice President Kamala Harris, because she might remember what Dr. Alveda King would tell her. Hey, but, uh, and, talking about dr alveda king she has a website and it's just alveda king.com you can go there alveda king.com she got books and she can sing like an angel she got songs uh that you can uh buy and so uh, check out her website alveda king.com and now uh let me get ready to play this uh, clip for you this is uh, mike Huckabee show with the Reverend Bill Owens. Well, from his pioneering work in the 1960s civil rights movement to his current position as the founder and president of the Coalition of African American Pastors, my next guest has spent a lifetime working to uplift the black community. He's very disturbed by what he sees as the cynical exploitation of black Americans to advance the left's political agenda. He writes about it in his new book, it is a powerful book. I told him, I love this book. It is honest, and it's one you ought to get. It's called A Dream Derailed, How the Left Hijacked Civil Rights to Create a Permanent Underclass. It's a real honor for me to welcome a dear friend, Reverend William Owens. Great to have you here, Bill. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mike. When I, was, when I was reading through your book, one of the things that I loved was that you go back through the history of the civil rights movement. When Dr. King was leading people to recognize that it's important to have equality, one of the things that he talked about was the dream of having people treated equally. Right. Not because of their skin, but in spite of it. That it had nothing to do with it. Right. Your book's called... The dream derailed. What derailed that dream of Dr. King? Many people took that to mean that you give black people more welfare. Hmm. And that derailed the dream of uh, people working hard, doing what's right, growing, developing, getting an education for themselves, and that helped derail the dream. Hmm. The dream was that I grew up in the civil rights movement. I marched with Dr. King. Yeah. So the dream was that we had equal rights to excel. We didn't need pity. We didn't need anybody looking down on us. We needed to excel and work as hard as anybody else to, to realize the American dream. And that's what we did. You said in the book something that was kind of startling. You said we were making terrific progress, and then all of a sudden it was like we just quit making progress and started going backwards with a new level of everybody's a racist. Bill, do you think everybody basically is a racist and that white privilege is the number one problem that we face in our culture I don't think today? that. No, I don't think that. I well, don't what is the problem that. then? I think the problem is 
we don't expect some people to come up to great expectations, mm. to work hard, to achieve as any American could achieve. And I think that's the problem, that we think that because some people think because we're black, we don't need to achieve. We don't need to come up to the standards of the American dream. Pat us on the head, let us get by. We don't need that. We don't want that. Mm. You have been unapologetically a conservative, which kind of puts you out of the mainstream and of many of your peers. You, you've openly said in the book, and this is something I appreciate in your candor, that you feel like that the Democrats as a party have hijacked the African-American community and kept them uh, really unfairly, almost locked them up. Uh, you use the uh, phrase from Maya Angelou's wonderful poem, Why the Caged Bird Sings. What do you mean by that? I mean that uh, some people have uh, felt we were not worthy, uh, we were not as good as, and we could not do as good as anybody else. And that's not true. Hmm. We can do anything anybody else can do. Yeah. We have the ability. And if you expect low expectations, that's what you get. Hmm. Well, I, I think one of the uh, powerful reminders in the book is that the civil rights movement started in the churches. Started it in was the a churches. spiritual, biblical movement. It was right. not a political it was movement. A spiritual, it was not political. It was a spiritual movement. You know, when I hear Dr. King's magnificent sermons, and I, in seminary, studied many of them, um, I, I'm kind of starkly reminded that he never wanted to be considered a civil rights activist. He always said, I'm a preacher. That's right. Unapologetically, he right. would say, I'm a preacher. We don't hear that very much. He today. went to his religion. Yes. Not politics. He yeah. went to his religion, his belief in God. I, I want to also ask you about uh, a period of your life. You were just depressed, ready to kind of give up and, and say, there's no great purpose for me. God led you to start helping young people right. go to Christian colleges and you help get them the resources to do it. What did that do for you? It helped me to deliver what God was in me, hmm. the, the spirit that was in me, to do good, help other people. We ended up putting 400 students in a Christian university. Wow. And, and, and when we started, I was led to get students that nobody else wanted. Hmm. And the spirit said, I'll give you students everybody wanted. Started with three students to 400. That's fantastic. It's all in this book, A Dream Derailed. I hope you'll get it. It's available now, and you can order it direct and learn more at adreamderailed.com. And for regular culture war updates and information about the Coalition of African American Pastors, visit their website. And that website is uh, www.caapusa.org. It's capusa.org. And, uh, yes, what a great interview. That was uh, Mike Huckabee interviewing Reverend Bill Owens, and his book is an outstanding book. And we've talked about it here before on our show. We had him on our show uh, earlier this uh, or last fall. And I'm glad that Governor Huckabee has read the book, and you can tell he's read it, and he's excited about that book. So if you never got it or if you got uh Need a gift for a friend coming up? A dream derailed. We got a link to it there on our web page, and we appreciate you so much if you order that book and read about it. My goodness, what a book! And that uh, just is eye opening. So, uh, and it's coming from uh, Reverend Owen's uh, Civil Rights, where he he marched with Dr. King as a young man in college, and and the racism he had living in the South, and yet. He is a strong voice for American principles, the American Constitution, and what Dr. King stood for, he stands for. He's a friend of Dr. Alveda King. And so I want you to understand, get his perspective and read his book, and a Dream Derailed. Now, I told you, we have a crypto corner, and what I was going to do is introduce you to next week's show with uh, Brock Pierce. And I've told you, uh, we, we're a conservative show. We talk about conservative politics. We need to talk about uh, people, places, things. But next week, we're going to dedicate the show to helping you better understand about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. I'm not telling you to go invest, but you need to know a little bit about it. So many people, so many people run from it. And conservatives especially 
they don't know what to do about cryptocurrency. And what's happening is they don't know what to do about Bitcoin, about blockchain. They don't understand it. We need people to get on the ball. You got to understand this. If not, there's no way, and I sure can't dig into it and tell you all about it. But I want you to know the highlights. You're going to need to know. We need to be in control. One thing that uh, kept President Trump out of the White House again is Facebook's uh, Mark Zuckerberg spending $400 million for uh, boxes that he put just in liberal uh, Democratic areas. And you got hundreds of millions of dollars that were spent by Silicon Valley. We've got to get conservatives involved with the technology. We need to understand it and know about it and be able to innovate and build it. And we can. And we do have some out there. But it's majority liberals. And Brock Pierce is a libertarian more than anything. But we're not going to get into politics next week. We're going to talk about cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, how it is affecting our economy. Do you know what the world's reserve currency is? It's the American dollar. What happens if China gets a digital dollar and it becomes the world's reserve currency? Well, we got uh, Brock Pierce coming on next week. We're going to ask him about that and a lot of things that pertain to this economy. And now we got socialism going full force here in America. Do you think Things will fall apart, and everybody goes, oh, let's just go to Marxism since socialism didn't work. Well, that's why a lot of people want to begin with. And, in fact, that's what Reverend Bill Owens, his book, A Dream Derailed, talks about how the left is hijacking the civil rights movement to get their agenda. It's Marxism, and they get closer and closer to their goal. And that's what we see from right here in our vantage point, Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics. And next week, I want you to better understand, and, and don't miss the show because the word Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, because we are going to put it in a way, so sort of like a, a drone flying high overhead, give you a bird's eye view, and, and you don't have to learn anything that you have to go out and say, hey, I'm going to buy some Bitcoin. But you need to understand how it's affecting our economy because it is the future and, and and we're going to see, just like even Bill Gates didn't believe in the Internet until his way, you know, it got so popular. Oh, yeah, I made a mistake on that. So you need to know about blockchain just to understand how it's changing the future. So don't be afraid of next week's show. In fact, I invite you to tell your friends about it and link it up, listen to it, and let people know that we're going to be talking about how you should understand, better understand blockchain and the technology that's coming. And that's what makes Bitcoin work is blockchain technology. So see you next week. Great show. Tell your friends and neighbors about it. And next week we're going to be talking about the future. And you need to know what's going on. So I'll see you then. God bless. Thanks for joining us today, and remember to listen again next week for another edition of Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics. You can order Ed's new book, Bedrock Truths, by clicking on the book cover right in front of you on the screen, or visit DocHolliday.org. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you again next week.